Hi everyone. So today we are going to read a book called Thunder Cake by Patricia Polacco. And we're going to talk a little bit as we go through it, but we're going to read it, we're going to talk about it, and then uh, we'll talk about your projects at the end. So Patricia Polacco is one of my favorite uh, artists and writers. And we're going to learn a little bit about her as we go through. But I believe that her family was actually from Russia. And you can see a little bit of that in the way she draws and the way it looks. Because it's got more of a, um, I guess, a folksy feeling to it in the way that they dress. Okay. Thunder Cake by Patricia Polacco. On sultry summer days at my grandma's farm in Michigan, the air gets damp and heavy. Storm clouds drift low over the fields. Birds fly close to the ground. The clouds glow for an instant with a sharp crackling light, and then a roaring, low, tumbling sound of thunder makes the windows shudder in their panes. The sound used to scare me when I was little. I loved to go to grandma's house. Babushka, as I used to call my grandma, had come from Russia years before, but I feared Michigan's summer storms. I feared the sound of thunder more than anything. I always hid under the bed when the storm moved near the farmhouse. This is the story of how my grandma, my babushka, helped me overcome my fear of thunderstorms. So before we read any further, I want you to keep an eye on some things as we go through our book, okay? Um, the first one I want you to keep an eye on is their clothes, because that's going to go along with your um, project. So look at their clothes and the patterns that you see. And then I want you to look and see what you can see about storms in the book, okay, how she illustrated storms. Grandma looked at the horizon, drew a deep breath, and said, This is thunder cake baking weather, all right. Looks like a storm coming to me. All right, here's the storm. So keep an eye on that, and then keep an eye on Grandma's clothes, okay? Child, you come out from under that bed. It's only thunder you're hearing, my Grandma said. All right, again, there's patterns in the bed and on the rug. The air was hot and heavy and damp. A loud clap of thunder shook the house, rattled the windows, and made me grab her clothes. Steady, child, she cooed. Unless you let go of me, we won't be able to make a thunder cake today. Thunder cake? I stammered as I hugged her even closer. Don't pay attention to that old thunder except to see how close the storm is getting. When you see the lightning, start counting real slow. When you hear the thunder, stop clowning. Stop counting. That number is how many miles away the storm is. Understand? She asked. We need to know how far away the storm is so we have time to make the cake and get it in the oven before the storm comes or it won't be a real thunder cake. Her eyes surveyed the black clouds away off in the distance. Then she strode in the kitchen. Her worn hands pulled a thick book from the shelf above the wood stove. Let's find the recipe, child, she crowed as she lovingly fingered the grease-stained pages to a creased spot. Here it is, thunder cake. She carefully pinned the ingredients on a piece of note paper. Now let's gather all the things we'll need, she exclaimed as she scurried toward the back door. We were by the barn door when a huge bolt of lightning flashed. I started counting like Grandma told me to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the thunder roared. Ten miles. It's ten miles away, Grandma said as she looked up at the sky. About an hour away, I'd say. You have to hurry, child. Gather them eggs careful-like, she said. Eggs from mean old Nellie Peck hen. I was scared. I knew she'd try to peck me. I'm here. She won't hurt you. Just get them eggs, Grandma said softly. The lightning flashed again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Nine, I counted. Nine miles, Grandma reminded me. Milk was next. Milk from old Kit Cow. As Grandma milked her, Kit Cow turned and looked mean right at me. I was scared. She looked so big. Zip went the lightning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I counted. Broom went the thunder. Eight miles, child, Grandma croaked. Now we have to get chocolate and sugar and flour from the dry shed. I was scared as we walked down the path from the farmhouse through tanglewood weeds to the dry shed. Suddenly, the lightning slit the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I counted. Boom, baroom, crashed the thunder. It scared me a lot, but I kept walking with Grandma. Another jagged edge of lightning flashed as I crept into the dry shed. One, two, three, four, five, six, I counted. Crackle, crackle, boom, kaboom, the thunder bellowed. It was dark and I was scared. I'm here, child, Grandma said softly from the doorway. Hurry now, we haven't got much time. We've got everything but the secret ingredient. Does anybody want to take a guess on the secret ingredient? I don't think you'll guess it. All right, let's see if you're right. Three overripe tomatoes and some strawberries, Grandma whispered as she squinted at the list. I climbed up high on the trellis. The ground looked a long way down. I was scared. I'm here, child, she said. Her voice was steady and soft. You won't fall. I reached three luscious tomatoes while she picked strawberries. Lightning again. One, two, three, four. Five, I counted. Kabang, baroom, the thunder growled. We hurried back to the house in the warm kitchen and we measured the ingredients. I poured them into the mixing bowl while Grandma mixed. I burned butter, or I churned butter for the frosting and melted chocolate. Finally, we poured the batter into the cake pans and put them into the oven together. Lightning lit the sky. I only counted to three, and the thunder rumbled and crashed. Three miles away, Grandma said, and the cake is in the oven. We made it. We'll have a real thunder cake. As we waited for the cake, Grandma looked out the window for a long time. Why, you aren't afraid of thunder. You're too brave, she said as she looked right at me. I'm not brave, Grandma, I said. I was under the bed, remember? But you got out from under it, she answered. And you got eggs from mean old Nellie Peckin. You got milk from old Kit Cow. You went through tanglewood, we tanglewood woods to the dry shed. You climbed the trellis in the barnyard. From where I sat, only a brave person could have done all them things. I thought and thought as the storm rumbled closer. She was right. I was brave. Brave people can't be afraid of a sound child, she said as we spread out the tablecloth and set the table. When we were done, we hurried into the kitchen to take the cake out of the oven. After the cake had cooled, we frosted it. Just then, the lightning flashed and this time it lit up the whole sky. Even before the last flash had faded, the thunder rolled, boomed, crashed, and barooned just above us. The storm was here. Perfect, Grandma cooed, just perfect. She beamed as she added the last strawberry to the glistening chocolate frosting on top of our thunder cake. So here's the, th the storm in the background. There's all their patterns. As rain poured down on our roof, Grandma cut a wedge for each of us. She poured us steaming cups of tea from the samovar. When the thunder roared above us so hard it shook the windows and rattled the dishes in the cupboards, we just smiled and ate our thunder cake. From that time on, I never feared the voice of thunder again. All right, so we're going to talk for just a minute. I'm going to move this a little closer. 
So your project for this week is you've got a few choices. You can choose to make a pattern for clothes. So what you would do is draw out your own clothes and then come up with a pattern for them. You could draw a storm. So you may draw some lightning, um, some big gray clouds rolling in. Or if you want to do a family project, you can work on making grandma's thunder cake. Okay, so those are your three options. You can, one, design a pattern for your own clothes on a piece of paper. So you would design, like grandma's clothes, design a pattern that you would wear. Okay, hers looks like maybe some flowers with petals, some dots. This looks like um, maybe some type of flower, I don't know. You could draw a storm coming in, or you could work as a family to make thunder cake. So just in case you can't read it, you would need one cup of shortening, one and three-fourths cup of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, three eggs separated, if you're gonna to cream together one at a time, blend the yolks in, beat whites until they're stiff, then fold in. You would need one cup of cold water, one third cup of uh, pureed tomatoes, and then you would sift together two and a half cups of cake flour, half a cup of dried cocoa, a cup and a half teaspoons of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Then you're gonna mix the dry mixture into the creamy mixture. Bake in two greased and floured eight and a half inch round pans at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. Frost with chocolate butter frosting and top that with strawberries. Okay, so those are your three projects. Remember, either draw your own pattern for your clothing, draw a storm, or work with your family to make thunder cake. And I will tell you a secret from, I think probably about, I read this book maybe in second grade. I think from the time I was in second grade until I was in fifth grade, this was the birthday cake I had my mom make me every year because it's that good. Okay, so I would love to see what you do. I hope you enjoy the book, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.